Okay, hey guys, welcome to A-Level Lessons Online. Okay, we're moving on to question 3 of your H2 Math A-Levels uh, paper 2. Okay, this is going to be looking at functions as well as transformation. Okay, so this question, the first part, part A of this question 3, will be covering more on your transformation. And then part B, will be looking more at functions. So this is a kind of like a combined question, okay? So let's just go into part A. Part A is quite simple. So the curve y goes to fx cuts the axis at uh, a0 and 0b. It is given that f inverse exists. State if it is possible to do so the coordinates of the points where the following curves cut the axis. So it is only when there is a0. So either your um, a0 or your b0. Okay, I mean your, I mean your, your x0 is zero or your y0. Is zero. Okay, part one. Let's go into part one. Part one is quite simple. Okay, part one, they are asking you, they give you the curve of y equals to f. 2x right so if you guys remember from our uh our knowledge on transformation is that for x the transformation of x if, if it comes to this case um of scaling right it always has to be in the form of y equals to f x over a okay so that means the coefficient must be below hence for this one we have to rewrite it as x over half so therefore you're going to be translating i'm oh, not translating sorry uh, scaling by half okay so in this case your answer will therefore just be half a only your x changes and zero b okay your y intercept did not change at all okay because there was nothing done to the y um, part of this function okay part two So part 2 gives you the equation of y equals to fx minus 1. So in this case, you're going to be looking at a case of a transformation. Um, in I mean, in the form of a translation of positive 1 unit in positive x direction. So therefore, your a value would just add 1 for your x over here and your b value will also be adding 1 so it will become 1b so in this case because you add 1 it is no longer a y intercept so you do not have to give this answer so your answer is just a plus 1 comma 0 part 3 so part 3 is a bit slightly trickier they give you y equals to f2x minus 1 so this one boils back down to our how we transform graphs. So using your AMMA rule, for this is only x, right? So you're looking at AM only. So you always add first. So you've got y equals to fx. So you translate it. You add first. So you get fx minus 1. And after that, you scale it. So you multiply it, 2x minus 1. So this, these two parts we've actually found in the previous parts. So you would just simply get from here. It would just be your normal translating of one unit and so for this part it will just be scaling by two by half sorry okay because it is x over half so your answer will be quite simple your only your um a will be affected right so you will just simply get you always translate first so you get a plus one and then after that you go scale it by half so you put a half in front and this would just be your new intercept so okay and lastly part four part four i feel is the easiest okay it's just giving you the inverse so when it's inverse basically your x and your y values will just swap so therefore your new intercepts will just be b zero and zero a that would just be your um, new intercepts. Okay, so if you need to, right, you can always draw these out. Okay, so just draw a simple curve. And then from there, you'll be able to see um, roughly how how your your values would be changing. Okay, so you can always just draw a simple curve. But make sure that it obeys the rule of y equals to k only intersecting at one point. Okay, because it says that the inverse exists for this curve. Okay, part B. Part B, part 1. State the value of a. And explain why this value has to be excluded from the domain of g. Find g to the power of 2x, g uh, inverse x. Give me answers in simplified form and find the values of b such that they both equate to each other. Okay, let's just rewrite this equation first. So you have got gx 
equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x whereby a is not included okay so it's for all real values and a is not included okay so from here right from this curve alone you can already see that from the bottom 1 minus x you have got an asymptote so this is a classic curve uh, function so you've got a asymptote which is going to be 1 minus x equals to 0 x will just be equals to 1 so this is your asymptote. Hence, you realize that in order for your curve to actually um, completely exist, the only value that has to be excluded, which is why they give you not equivalent to, will be A. Okay, because the curve will never ever touch this point. Okay, it will never ever intersect or cut or even reach, okay, anywhere near x equals to 1 because it is an asymptote. Okay, so therefore, A equals to 1, whereby this value of a equals to 1 has to be excluded from the domain of G as it will result in G being undefined uh, un undefined in G being undefined since it is an asymptote. Okay, that is your answer for part B. Part 1, finding the value of A. Okay, part B, part 2, it's very simple. So they ask you to find G to the power of 2x. So this is a classic square function. So G to the power of 2x will just be G times Gx. So sub in your Gx, you will have G times 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x. From here, you can sub in g uh, x to become 1 minus 1 over x, so you will just simply have 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x. I know it sounds crazy, right? But that's how it is. Okay, then after this, you just need to simplify. So when you simplify, you realize you just get 1 minus 1 over 1 over 1 minus x. Quite simple. So this one is just an inverse of an inverse. You will just be left with... 1 minus, bring the whole thing, flip the whole thing. Okay, this is essentially 1 times, uh, 1 divided by 1 over 1 minus x. So this whole part over here, for those of you guys who can't see it, uh, is 1 divided by 1 over 1 minus x. This would be equivalent to 1 times 1 minus x over 1. Got it? So this would just be 1 minus 1 minus x. Oops, sorry. 1 minus 1 minus x, which would just leave you with a very, very nice x over here. Okay, then now you have to realize what the domain is. So always have to write your domain. So domain of g square is very simply the domain of gg, which is equivalent to the domain of g. So it's the second alphabet. And this would just simply be equivalent to from negative infinity to 1, because 1 is not included. Union, which means that you include the rest of Oh, crap, sorry. It should just be a U like that. Um, from 1 all the way down uh, up to in positive infinity. That's all. So therefore, your answer would just be that G square X would equals to X where it is for all real values of X and you're excluding your A which is positive 1. Okay, so like just to repeat, that is because it was your asymptote. Okay, then after then they ask you, wow, so many workings. Okay, uh, part two is to also find G inverse X. Okay, G inverse X, quite simple. So G inverse X, okay, the way to find inverse is you always let Y equals to your original function. So in order to find this part over here, okay, so we let y equals to gx always do it this way so therefore y equals to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x this is for all real values of x excluding 1 okay that means 1 is not included over here so you you just need to bring it over you get 1 minus y equals to 1 over 1 minus x Okay, then all you need to do is make x the subject of the formula so what we'll do is we'll just swap places cross multiply 
you get left with x equals to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus y. Okay, and then now you substitute your y to be x again, and then you substitute x back to your g inverse. So this now becomes g inverse x. This here, your x becomes g inverse x. So this is what we've learned in functions already, right? So go back and revise if you're not sure. And now your y will just become the next, the new x over here. Okay, then now we, all we need to do is to always have the domain. Okay, functions, you always have the domain as well as this function. Okay, always comes to the domain. So what you can do is you can always plot the graph. Okay, the domain of g inverse is equivalent to the range of g. So plot your graph, you'll find that you get quite a nice graph that looks something like this. I won't draw it out to scale. But it looks something like this. It's a quite, quite a bad drawing. Uh, see if you can draw it, something like that. Okay, and you've got both the asymptotes. Okay, so you'll find that from your graph, you can find that your range of g will also be from negative infinity to 1. And you exclude the 1 as well because of your asymptote. And you get 1 infinity. So this would be a domain of your g inverse. Okay, so therefore, okay, your g inverse x will very simply be equivalent to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x where it is for all real values of x as well and you are going to exclude the one okay quite a simple part all right then last the last part part three okay you're going to be looking at the question asks you when your g square of b is equivalent to the g inverse of b okay so we've already found out what these are right so in this case we just sub x to become b okay this is you shouldn't need to write this you should be able to see it yourself so you just have b equals to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus b and this would be for all real values excluding 1 okay i've already uh we've already found these two parts right in the previous two parts of the of this question so you just need to substitute it in now so it's like x equals to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus x in this case it's just substituting x to become b you get b equals to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus b so you just need to bring the different parts over, you'll be left with b minus 1 um, equals to 1 over b minus 1. Okay, you just swap places around. Okay, let's not skip steps, okay, so that you guys can see it, right? So b minus 1 equals to negative 1 over 1 minus b. So you swap the negative, okay, the bottom becomes positive now. So you get b minus 1 equals to b minus 1 over, I mean 1 over b minus 1. So you get b minus 1 squared cross multiply expand this out um you get you can expand it and you form quadratic equation then you just solve using calculator if not if you can see it the other way you just realize that you have b minus one equals to one or b minus one equals to negative one so therefore b equals to two or b equals to uh, zero Okay, so this is, if you can see it, okay, because y, square root, you can very simply just square root your 1 over here. You will still get 1, but always remember that square root, you can square root a negative number. So you always get a positive and you get a negative. That's why you get 1 and you get minus 1. So that will be the answer for finding the values of b. Okay, so actually that's all for this question. Quite a very simple question is on functions and transformation. Go look through it as well if you need to, all right? Don't panic when it comes to this kind of question, okay? Always work it out step by step and remember your functions, um, what is important in functions, okay? Always remember your, you must always have a domain. So the domain is very important. Always remember to write the domain next to your function, okay? The function cannot come alone, all right? And then just remember that your function, I mean, your, your domain of f will be equivalent to the inverse, uh, the do domain of f inverse, uh, the range of f inverse, Okay, so your range of, I mean, your domain of f inverse will equal to the range of f. Okay, I write it down over here again. So the domain of f, okay, la, I won't write it domain. Let's use the range, okay? So the, the domain of f inverse would be equivalent to the range of f. So just remember this, and you should be good to go for any sort of inverse questions with regards to functions. Okay, so that's all I have for this video. Okay, if you did enjoy it, be sure to like it. Um, let me know that you're enjoying it. As well as subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. I'll be releasing more videos very, very soon on this paper and other subjects as well. So stay tuned for that. If not, 
that's actually all I have. Okay, if you have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.